I hope you really appreciate it, but I've got dressed for you guys. Who am I kidding? I haven't got dressed. I just put on clean pyjamas, but I had our works Christmas party last night. I had my knitting Christmas party the night before that. I've been working from home today. Quite frankly, getting out of my pyjamas was just far too much hassle, which also explains why you might see occasional bits of glitter still. And it's supposedly biodegradable glitter, but it is still hanging around like a rash, um, as glitter is wont to do. So welcome back. Um, thank you so much to everyone who's been watching. Um, I'm especially want to say hello to everyone who's subscribed. Um, I've got over 100 subscribers now, which for something that I'm doing very ad hoc, I really appreciate it. It's really lovely to meet you all. Um, and I hope to get to know you all a little bit better as, as we go along. Today I wanted to share with you um, a couple of finished projects, a little bit of stash acquisition, um, some projects resurrected from um, storage, that's the word, and yeah, we'll have a bit of a chat and see what there is to say about things. So the first thing I wanted to show you is the um, shawl that I was working on, the All About That Brioche shawl. The all about that brioche shawl that I mentioned last time, which is now finished. Um, let me see if I can try and vaguely squeeze all of it in shot. I'm really pleased with how this came together. As I said, this was my first brioche project, um, which you can tell if you look closely, there are quite a few little mistakes in it, especially when it got started. But I mean, like little bits of stitches that aren't doing quite what they're supposed to be doing but as I said it was my first brioche project and I am not that precious about my knitting that I care enough to go and unpick things when they go wrong I would rather plow on and get a finished project and I will learn from it and I will do better next time and as I keep saying to anyone who's starting out in knitting or crafting of any description the mistakes prove that it's handmade and I think that's a very important thing to remember but yeah so very pleased with this I just pop it on so you can have a look, see what it looks like. I've forgotten how to do a shawl. Um, I think it's really lovely. You get tip that forward slightly. Um, you get the full the yellow on one side and the grey on the other, and I think that makes it look quite punchy and fun. And I, I really like that. Um, I didn't have the grey colour last time to show you what it was. So this was the grey that um, the second half is made of. It's Yorkshire Spinners. West Yorkshire Spinners yarn, uh, their signature four ply in colourway. I don't know whichever one of those numbers is actually the colourway. Um, possibly six hundred, possibly zero seven five nine. Um, I don't like it when they don't label which numbers are which. It's a little bit confusing for me. Um, but yeah, this is really nice. It's quite soft. It's still got a little bit of crunch to it, I think, but um. In a soft, I really like it. Um, I haven't blocked the shawl yet, so I don't know what it's going to turn out like when it's blocked because it's Christmas and who has time to do things like blocking around Christmas? Um, I will try and get that done perhaps over the Christmas holidays, but not until then. It's still, it's still lots to be done. Um, the yellow, I mentioned this last time, but just to show you again, this is the um, Lorna Jane Makes Wagtail colourway, again on a sock base, um, which just I just love and it turns out that because I can't read patterns and have no idea how much yarn things take I've still got enough to make a second one or another project in the same colors and as I said before gray and yellow are my favorite colors so ooh, all the fun um because because I can't count and I thought I needed two lots of each rather than two lots in total so yay more opportunities for fun things could be anything looking forward to that um the next thing that I wanted to show you is a work in progress. So this is in the little um, um, Designs by Lucy V bag that I picked up at the Christmas market that I mentioned to you the other week. And hiding in here I have the, um, if I want exposure I'll get my tits out colourway that I mentioned again that I was going to start something with and I have. And it looks a bit tangled, but my knitting tends to do that. Um, this is the start of the second mitt, because the first one is here. Let me show you this. So this is the Nice at the Ballet 
um, pattern, um, which designer escapes my mind at the moment. One moment. Okay, so Night at the Ballet Mitts by Fran Carl, the Inky Knitter. So it's Inky Knitter Designs. I'll, I'll put links um, in the show notes below. Um, I have really enjoyed doing this. Again, it's got a few bits that are sort of kind of new to me, the way that it's constructed. It's got sort of a triangles or Christmas trees, as anyone who looks at it at the moment at this time of year thinks is on there. Um, I haven't picked up the thumb on this one yet. I'm going to knit both up of... Um, the main mitts and then do the thumbs for both later. I haven't knit any ends in yet because I hate knitting in ends and I always put that off at the last moment possible. But they've come together, um, yeah, basically I'm really pleased with how they're, how they turn out and the fit I think is really nice too. Um, I've knit these on, I've dropped it on the floor, so again, hang on a sec. I've knit, knitting these with little um, nine inch circular needles, which is the first time I've used needles that tiny um, and I love them. Um, really pleased with how easy it is to knit with these. Um, these are really, you know, it's the brand that everyone uses. I'll look it up and I'll put a link in there. Um, but they're sort of ultra straight ones, so they're very, very pointy, um, which I probably wouldn't use next time for this particular yarn anyway. Um, I bought three different nine inch circulars in three different types, in three different sizes, because of a couple of different projects that I want. So these ones are, um, I think, yeah, two and a half mil needles. And I've got some in 3 mil and 3.25 mil and some in bamboo and some in non-sharp. And just so I could try them out really and see what they were like because I've not used tiny little ones before. Um, but yeah, really quite pleasing to work with on definitely easier than Magic Loop. Um, so yeah, really pleased with those. Um, these are coming on really nicely. I started these on Friday. Today is Wednesday. Um, so making good progress. Quite pleased. Um, and that's including the fact that, as I said, two Christmas parties this week already, so not as much knitting time as normal. Yeah, happy with the progress on this. The other project that I've done a little bit of work on um, is one that's been sitting in my um, works in progress pile for a little while. Um, and it comes out occasionally and... This is a With Ease shawl by, again, designer escapes me. I'll put it on the screen. Um, but this I'm knitting up in Malabrigo, in Malabrigo Worsted, which is one of my favourite yarns. I just can't get enough of the squishiness of this. It's really, really beautiful. Um, so it's pure merino, it comes in the most gorgeous colours. Again, grey and yellow, can you tell? Um, I've, I've just, basically I'm working on this sort of a, the basic grey, but which is a couple of yellow stripes in, just for me, because, because grey and yellow. Um, and this is going to be deliciously warm um, once it's finished, and I might just keep growing it bigger and bigger and bigger until I get bored and I have something that I can live in um yeah um yeah this is really pleased with this it's again this has got some it it looks cabled but involves no actual cabling it's just lots of increases and decreases um for make sure you can see that um and it's lovely and even the back the texture on the back looks because it's all like bobbles it reminds me of like snow fields that people have been skiing through little mogul fields really yeah really pleased with this it's coming out really nicely of course because I'm doing stripes I'm going to have loads more ends to weave in rather than if I'd just done it in the single colour that was in the pattern but so snugly it's going to be really warm I'm really pleased with that I've just it's on hiatus again for the moment because I've only got that much of the grey left and I need some more to arrive um because why would I ever start a project where I actually have enough of the correct amount of yarn in stock? No, I have one bit of one colour and not enough of the other and this is me all over. But 
that's lovely and I'm really pleased with that as well. The, my advent calendar has been ongoing. I've had not exclusively yarn in my advent calendar from Neil. I have had um, pieces to put together a model tower bridge, which I am thoroughly enjoying. Um, I've always wanted the um, Lego tower bridge kit, but it is extortionately expensive and is not on my shopping list, therefore. But he's bought a sort of a cardboard pop-out assembly model, which I'm putting together slowly as well, which is fantastic. Um, but what I have, have had a few more mini skeins. Um, so I think I was showing you previously the little um, pirate colourway section. So all the different ones that sort of vaguely pirate related, the Polly Parrot and the Treasure Chest and Jolly Roger colours which are really cute and lovely. And then I got another little run of five. These are tiny mini skeins. I think possibly 10 grams, but I think they're five. I need to, to weigh them at some point. But the other colourway that, um, the other little set that I got was a little um, sort of fade from blue to yellow. Um, and this is um, the waves on the sand colourway, sort of all together. So a bit of sand and then moving into really pretty again these are all going into my um uh beekeepers um quilt um which i'm so excited to one day have finished i mean it's going to be years in the making but one day and when i get to there it's going to be fantastic um i'll try to remember next um next time i film one of these i'll show you some of the little hexi puffs that i've already made and show you the progress that i'm making on that because I'm a sucker for mini skeins, I got, um, I saw that Vicky Brown Designs was doing a grab bag, like Lucky Dip on mini skeins. Um, last year I got, um, Neil bought me um, the advent calendar, the Vicky Brown Designs advent calendar for Christmas. So I got it as my Christmas present and then I opened them up through January and really, really loved her yarns. So um, when this little, um, yeah, grab bag opportunity came up. I grabbed it. Um, and I've got some really lovely yarn colours, little four little mini skeins in this little bag. Um, they're mostly ones from Vicky Brown's um, Vicky Brown's Designs Mini Skein Club, that sort of leftover ones from throughout the year. So this was the August Mini Skein Club. Um, and they're all four ply sock yarn. Um, Superwash Merino, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. Um, so this one, yeah, with Pomegranate from or from the August Mini Skein Club. This one is from September. Um, and I can't actually see the name of the yarn on that one, but it's a lovely yellow. It makes me very happy. Um, one from the May Mini Club. Um, again, no name on that one specifically, but a very nice blue. And then this one, which is again, August Mini Skein Club. And this one says Saguaro on it. I'm not sure if that's something, a fancy term that I don't know if that's the name of the colorway, but that's a lovely sort of cream with hints of green and blue in it. Again, all going into the beekeeper's quilt unless I get distracted by other things, but. So pretty, so squishy. And they're not the only mini skeins that I've acquired over the last couple of weeks. So I saw these on um, Amy from Stranded Podcasts, well, on Stranded Podcast. Um, and as soon as I saw them, they had to come home with me. So this is the Fiber Fox Blackberry Picking um, Merino 4-ply four four mini skein set. Um, which are just the most beautiful collection of autumnal colours. Um, I just I just love autumnal sort of earthy colours as well. So this is going to be some kind of shawl, um, which I will start. I'm thinking of starting this as like a Christmas Eve, Christmas Day cast on. Um, not sure what order I'm going to put the colours in yet. Not certain which pattern I'm going to knit, but a shawl of some description in beautiful autumn colours. Yes, that's that's my Christmas present from me to me. Uh, so that's my all my sort of yarny stash acquisition. The other, I wanted to show you one last thing that I've acquired over the last week. We went to visit uh, my husband's family last weekend. Um, 
my mother-in-law passed away earlier this year and when we went over there this weekend um, my father-in-law insisted that I take some of home with her take home some of her craft materials so I have here a bag full of I'll open it up full of cross stitch floss loads of embroidery thread um, from projects that she started um, there's uh, various projects that I think she meant to start but hasn't there's a little hedgehog kit for a little pin marker pin cushion and somewhere in here amongst lots and lots of stash some of these are anchor or DMC some of them are just generic relatively cheap ones but I have plans for those as well um, but somewhere in here more I mean basically I'm not gonna have to buy embroidery yarn or embroidery thread for a long time a bit glitter and shiny in that one ah here it is a little butterfly that she'd started stitching um, and that she never quite got around to finishing so I'm going to try and find out which pattern this came from or at least mirror it and try and work out how to finish this off and um, either give it to Neil or give it back to Frank I'm not sure which um, Neil was finding it sorry Frank was um, my father-in-law was finding it quite difficult to look at sort of these half finished projects um so yeah i'll get it finished and then decide exactly what i do with it afterwards but i will finish that off off for my mother-in-law so i promised last week that i would show you some photos of uh, my frost fair dress that i made the uh, iona dress um i did get some photos taken last night which i will put up here that show me in my outfit. Unfortunately, they're not quite full length ones and I was a little bit too frazzled trying to organize things to, to get some more taken afterwards. But hopefully they give you sort of a feel for what the outfit was supposed to look like um, with some face paint and stuff. Um, hopefully um, the frost fair will go ahead in my local town next year and I'll show you the full outfit surrounded by everyone else in their full costumes as well. Um, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of a feel for what it was gonna look like. I have been um, doing a little bit of organising this week as well. Um, in when I had the opportunities, I've been going through my Ravelry queue um, to try and work out which projects I actually genuinely want to try and do over the next time period. I know a lot of people do sort of their their sort of pick their nine projects that they're planning on completing over the next year, or at least making sure that the nine projects that they want to complete over the next year. My Ravelry queue was 249 items long, which is a little bit unmanageable. Um, so I have spent some time, I have gone through, I have moved a lot of them off of my queue and just into my favourites as things that are lovely, but realistically, I'm never going to make. Um, however, I still currently have 130 something items on the queue and then I went and added on about another 15 new ones that I decided I wanted to make as well. So trying to get it down to my nine makes for the year is tricky. What I do want to do this year um, coming is I would really like to knit myself some more garments. So I'm thinking a cardigan or a sweater or maybe another dress. Um, maybe start with a cardigan or a sweater again rather than another dress because that just took forever um but I'm not sure what to make and what to need to pick a pattern that works I tend to wear dresses on a day-to-day -day basis so something that I can wear over a dress um is something that I need to look for and I'm sure I'll find something eventually but still looking and then I need to obviously find the perfect yarn for it and I will cast on a sweater this by spring let's say by swing by swing by spring i'll have cast on a sweater of some description we'll work out what it is when we get there but accessories are just so much easier to knit and and, and look at all the pretty colors we'll get there <laughs> um as you can see we've done a little bit more decorating in the house since the last video 
much more stuff on the tree. Um, and I will try and swing around and show you my other little tree. Please excuse all the other mess in the room. So my little tree has been um, following me around for a few, good few years now. Um, So my little tree has been following me around for a good few years now. I think I bought this when I was still living up in Leamington Spa um, with a friend of mine. And it is a tiny little thing. It has been shedding everywhere, but it is still my tree. It is still lovely. And I still do not have space for an actual Christmas tree in the house yet. So until then, I refuse to buy anything else. That one will see me through, but it is beautiful. Um... You can probably, you might have seen, I don't know if you could see, there's quite a lot of little drum ornaments on there, which Neil got me for Christmas last year as part of my advent calendar last year because, because I'm in the drumming group, which is very sweet. And you might also have seen the lovely little wind up drummer that my mum and dad bought me last year, because I think everyone's by now got into the idea that the two things that I like most are knitting and drumming and everyone's starting to get that. But this little man, Just makes me really smile. I'm gonna have to do that. He might never stop. He's a bit erratic in his timing. He'll probably keep going now for a little while. Oh no! Yes, no! Stopping, starting. <laughs> He's gonna make editing this podcast now really difficult. Uh, <laughs> Occasionally, you pick the box if you when you pack him away after Christmas, you pick the box up and suddenly he goes, Oh no, I have still got a little bit of sound in me, and the box starts playing the tune. Um, but yeah, he's very cute, I love him a lot. And I've forgotten again, I'm sure there was one last thing that I wanted to share with you, but my brain is not working today. Two Christmas parties already this week, and it's only Wednesday. Um, I did go, um, actually. The reason I went, so I went to Wadsden Manor um, last weekend, popped in briefly, because I'd seen Dundonet go there as part of her Vlogmas challenge. Saw the Hershey went there quite early on and it looked really pretty and very wintry and it's a lovely Christmas market. And I thought, oh, that looks lovely. So after we visited my in-laws and Neil's family, um, we were driving up to see my family and Wadsden Manor was essentially halfway between the two. So we thought, yes, we shall pop in. Um, the day we went was not as pleasant as the day that Dundonet went. Um, it was cold and very wet and very windy and not the kind of weather that made you want to hang around. But we did go in and I made a couple of tiny little purchases. So because I definitely need more stuff for this tree. But how could you say no to a little woolly sheep? A little woolly sheep. So uh, he came home with me and also... Over on the other side of the tree, I'll bring him over here. Little felted dinosaur. Rawr. Because it's a T Rex and the Santa hat holding a gift. I mean, Rawr. love it. Um, <laughs> we spent enough time at Wasden Manor to walk around the stalls once, knit back, and get my two little decorations, and then we like, ran to the car because it was. The coldest I have been since last winter. It was cold and wet and miserable and I felt so sorry for all the stall holders that were there and having to stand outside in it. It was still surprisingly busy all considering the weather, but not the most pleasant of experiences. Definitely next year though, I'd like to go back and see the um, evening lights that they do there. I'll probably try and take my mum next time because she would really enjoy that kind of thing. Last week I also went to Dalston to see a friend of mine um, perform some live poetry. She's part of the poetry group Rhymes with Orange. Um, I may have to ask her if she demands me including some little video footage of her. Hmm, we'll see. Um, but yeah, so Rachel is a very good friend of mine that I work with. Um, yeah, she's part of the Rhymes with Orange poetry group. We went to see them and they perform in Dalston and just next door to where they were in Dalston we came across the 
um, a community garden, outdoor community garden, which was all sort of lit up with lights and candles and lanterns and things. And I shared some photos of that on my front door advent calendar that I'm doing over on Instagram. Um, and I'll include a link to that below. Um, but I just thought it was lovely to come across such a lovely little magical space and then to spend some time with friends in good company with... When I first got invited to come along to a poetry night I really wasn't sure what to expect and I've been a few times now and it is always wonderful there's a fantastic mix of like sort of more comedic poems um ones that are just really sort of sad and and it's not man in black roller neck and a beret smoking a girl while reading his 24 hour long poem about his doomed relationships it's they they tend to be quite short um sort of a few minutes long um a really interesting mix depending on the different people that are performing as to what's actually going on in them um i would absolutely recommend it it's sort of like on the cusp of stand up which doesn't which doesn't really do it justice but if you enjoy a slightly more melancholy stand-up I think you'd really love this kind of poetry night because there's enough really sort of laugh out loud belly laughs but with sometimes something else a little bit darker a little bit deeper to it as well yeah so I will ask Rachel if I can include the little video I took of her it's not the best quality because a I had been drinking and b I was in the front row and trying not to disturb anyone else with the filming while I was doing it but um yeah, if it's if that's the kind of thing, if it sounds interesting to you, I do definitely recommend it. I say her poetry group is called Rhymes with Orange and they do quite a lot in London, but they also do the Edinburgh um, Fringe Festival each year. Each year? Most years, certainly. And they sort of, they visit other places as well. So they've, I know they've performed um, down in Lewis and yeah, various other places. So well worth looking out for. I think that's everything that I've got to say today. Thank you so much again for watching. I really appreciate it. Before I go, I just wanted to do a quick shout out to another drama who started up a podcast. We are taking over the world. So um, as I think most of you already know, um, Leslie over at Not Enough Yarn was the person responsible for getting me involved in podcasting. And now one of our other drummers, um, Kellyanne, has started off a new podcast called Yarn Tales by the Sea, which I'll also link to below. Um, and she's only done the one episode so far, but go on overhead and give her some love. And I think she'd really appreciate it, that. And i um, really looking forward to seeing how the rest of her podcasts develop. Um, uh, Kellyanne does a lot of crochet. She is a knitter and she does sort of a lot of socks, but she probably does more overall, more crochet than knitting. Um, and yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what, what, what comes out there. So thank you again for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them in the comments below. Um, I will try to put all the links up as quickly as possible. Um, I'm still trying to work out the best way of editing this because while it was fantastic, um, I'm quite pleased with how the edit process worked last week. That did involve me sitting in full float view of the rest of my office editing my own face during my lunch break, which not something that I desperately want to repeat. So unless I can borrow the work computer and bring it home, not going to happen. Um, I might just sort of try cycling through various different software options until I find something that works for me. So style wise, everything's going to keep changing for a little while until I settle on the thing that works best for me. Um, any recommendations? Again, please leave them below your preferred ways of editing podcasts. I'd love to hear about it. Um, any Sweater recommendations, I would really love to hear any sweater recommendations that you have for the, the project that I should cast on by this spring. Um, I'm especially looking for things that say can be worn over dresses, so not too long, I think. I don't really know. I want something that works well on a dress. I don't know what that is. Um, fashion, not my strong point. Um, and something that works well for um, larger bodies, big hips. Um, yeah, any suggestions, I would love to hear them. Um, yeah, so thank you very much again for watching and I will probably see you again sometime over the Christmas holidays when I have a little bit more free time. Thank you very much. Bye.